what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. I think one thing in the in the Kelly conversation, too, we had, we had a really great discussion in the, in the Bayou Ford YouTube chat during the commercial break. And it was about market value and Brian Kelly not being willing to pay market value because no doubt, like, the market value for defensive tackles is massive right now. Um, but it was painted as the unwillingness to pay was painted as uh, stubbornness in one comment. And I don't agree with that. Um, I don't think it's stubbornness. Now, it sounded like that with what he said, but I think it's more of like an analyzing of the situation and it's almost more like managing a salary cap or even just managing a locker room. Yeah. Uh, because while I agree that some of the initial concerns over is NIL going to create disruption in the locker room, I was like, ah, I don't really think so. Everybody, you know, it's your boy, like get your money or whatever. I, I, this is the first time where I'm like, huh, am I wrong there? Because what would it be like if all of a sudden like a, a pretty good, player shows up and it's one year and he's making more than anyone on the team and even making more than some coaches. Like, is it stubborn if you don't want to do that? Or do you think that's just like bad management, bad leadership, bad business? So I, I, I don't know if I agree with the stubborn angle, even though I do agree that, yeah, the market value of defensive, defensive tackles right now is just super, super high. You know, one of the things that we don't talk about when we have this conversation about how much you're spending in the you know transfer portal is you now have to spend to bring in these top classes. So LSU just brought in a really good class. That's going to cost you. And also, you know what LSU has like currently right now is like one of the top three classes in this next recruiting class that you've got to yeah. be able to have funds set away. And it's got the who's who. you got the top quarterback in the country. Like, those things cost money as well. It's not just what you're doing in the transfer portal. Like we like going back to the Boise State coach, right? Well, that's not the situation here at LSU or in the SEC. Like you have to have those funds set aside. And if you want this all-time class, which is this thing's setting up to be, like you have to realize like some of that money is not going to be spent within this year. It's pushed down the road to bring in the next future stars. And 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 that's where um that's a great point. Uh, that, that I hadn't really even considered. And that's where a contract like the one that Brian Kelly has um, gives him more leeway than a lot of coaches have to operate with a, with, with a bit of a farther view, right? He doesn't necessarily have to pull out all stops to go all in in this year if he thinks that, okay, maybe we sacrifice a bit here in the short term, but we gain in the long term because we now have that million dollars to invest in uh, finalizing that really good class that we have coming in next. So um, I see where it's coming from, man. I just think it's a um, it's a tough spot. And, and look, just at a certain point. Okay, so the, the new name uh, coming out here is, and the thing is, it sounds like he'd get it really expensive, but it's Javier Suggs. And he's actually from Grand Valley State, uh, Brian Kelly's old school. So, And actually, Coach Kelly's youngest son played on Grand Valley State with Suggs last year. Um, it's an interesting, he's from Flint, Michigan. He's 6'3", 280. He's had a really productive last two seasons. Uh, 14 and a half temples, eight sacks, nine pass deflections, two forced fumbles. Um, be a huge of a competition. But Jake, look at this offer list, and I wonder how expensive he even gets. Because right now it's Arkansas, Florida State, Kentucky, Michigan, oh, USC, wow. Wisconsin. Wisconsin just lost another D lineman in the portal, CJ West to Indiana. Like it's th this too could get maybe a little too expensive. We'll we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> hey, can we get can we get the family discount? I mean, the Kelly's Grand Valley State, a lot of yeah. history there. What's that family discount talking about? And some listeners might be like, Grand Valley State, like, can he play? And I understand you saying that. But remember, you're looking for, right now, a rotational piece that can come in and you don't lose a lot when you bring in that rotational piece. Like, that's kind of where yeah. you're at right now. Like, there was a couple of what we thought could be game changers in the defensive tackle class. I would say two, three at most. You didn't get those players. But you still need to add depth because that's what you don't have. Like, you've got... 
Like Joe, Jacoby and Gillard's been here for a long time. Like that's going to be a solid, you know, defensive tackle Gilly's right there fine. in the middle of, of your defense. That's fine. And you're bringing in a couple of different guys. Like you're bringing in one from Wisconsin that you're hoping can step up. Like you need Jalen Lee to step up more than he stepped up so far in his career. You've got young guys in this signing class that can come be, you know, nice, you know, emergency depth pieces, one being a five-star player. But you also, like, you need at minimum four guys that are veteran guys, I think, that are rotating in because there's a lot of helmet tapping at that position. Like, hey, uh, your boy needs one. I need you to, like, come get me, right? And you don't want that to become a deficiency where teams, and I, trust me when I say this, they have analysts now that look for stuff like that. And when those top tier defensive tackles come out of the game because they're helmet tapping, and here comes the second unit, they will check to it like an inside zone right then and there. Yeah, and like that's what you have to make sure that you don't fall into. Well, and um, you didn't pay Bo Davis just to recruit, you know. Yeah. So he yeah. has to make Jalen Lee and these guys better. Hey, you want to know a funny thing about Suggs before we go to break? I know we're late here, but uh. So he actually went to the same high school as Garrett Dellinger. And you're like, wow, Dellinger's been at LSU forever, right? Suggs was a senior in high school when Dellinger was a sophomore. There's no He's way. actually older than Dellinger, but Suggs has two years left. He was at Grand Valley. He was redshirt, year canceled for COVID, medical redshirt in 21, and then played in 22 and 23. So my man uh, is going into his sixth year of college. There's no way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, Dellinger's been here, it feels like, since Joe Burrow was here. I mean, I know he hasn't, know. but it feels like it. Okay. All right. Well, hey, he's got two years left. He, he's going to be grown. He is definitely going to be a grown man <laughs> uh, by the time he leaves wherever he ends up choosing. And so, all right, another defensive tackle. We'll be on that watch uh, to see where he lands, and hopefully LSU can get one of these guys. Wow, Jake. What incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, Hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post every single day here on OTB LSU.